Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness, um, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And the topic of today is about emotional vampires. So first thing we're going to do, as always, we're going to be doing a um, meditation. And after the meditation, I will be talking about our subject of the day. Um, today, uh, I may have to finish up earlier, so we may just have one hour. I think by 11 o'clock, I'm going to have to wrap it up because we do have some filming uh, uh, scheduled that we have to take care of. So uh, forgive me for finishing up for only one hour. Um, <clears throat> all right. So for the moment, what we're going to do is just simply um, we're going to divert our attention inwards. So you will be very effortlessly, very simply bringing your attention from looking outside to look inside. So imagine that all of a sudden you can look inwards. So you can use your imagination first and then followed by diverting your attention inwards towards the center of yourself. Look for the observer within yourself, the one who is observing, the one who's listening to me right now. And you bring your attention in that direction. And take a deep breath and relax into it. And as you are focused on the one who is within, you can experience gradually that your mind quiets down because your attention is on the source of yourself, the source, the core of your being, the very essence of yourself. You're bringing your attention in that way, in that direction. And just relax into this, relax into this place. Your mind may be busy for a while, but you simply disengage from your mind despite trying. You're not trying to disengage. You're simply bringing your attention towards the source of yourself. It's effortless. Doesn't really require any kind of effort. You're simply shifting your attention. Instead of putting your attention outwards, you put your intention inwards. And then suddenly you begin to feel a transmission of energy taking place. Our hearts will link in with each other. And you begin to feel that your eyelids are getting heavier. You're becoming more quiet. Sort of maybe a bit sleepy, but present, and the deep sense of silence will take over.
very effortlessly. You're here. There is the sense of being. Awareness is here, but it's not engaged with anything. It simply is. Take a deep breath and just relax into this moment. Just simply observe the power of this moment to take over. The presence of the self, of the being, takes over.
simply being here and connected, connecting to the unified field of oneness, the unified field of consciousness. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Well, nice seeing you all. <laughs> hi, uh, Ute, Ute? Yes, yes, hi, hi. Uh, where, where do you live? Where are you from? I'm from Germany. Germany, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice I, to see you. I met you in, in Frankfurt. Yes. Yes, yes, I remember and, that. Yes, the last uh, the last evening you were there for the third eye activation. Yes, I was there. It was only this one time I have seen you. It's your first time joining us at the academy. No, it's the third time. But before, um, I, uh, I wasn't I wasn't visible because I wasn't at home. And today I'm at home, and it's calm here. So right. Um, I have the, the, the tone and, and, and the picture, yes. Well, welcome. Nice to see you. Uh, it's yeah. so nice to yeah. see you. Absolutely. happy about that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yes. of course. Yeah. So, emotional vampires. So, we all have encountered or do encounter people either on regular basis or every once in a while, that uh, they suck your energy and you uh, feel tired, exhausted. Um, you, there's different things can happen. When basically for me is if I do encounter uh, an emotional vampire, first of all, uh, they're, they're not necessarily bad people or evil people, but uh, the people who suck your energy in, they're basically emotionally damaged. They're wounded. Something has happened to them in their childhood and uh, created this deep wound. And uh, as a result of that, they uh, have become who they are and they require a lot of energy. And uh, when you do carry a lot of light and you're in this place of uh, higher vibration, your frequency has arisen and you have light around you, naturally you will attract a lot of different kind of people. Um, so what some of the things that happens when you do encounter a 
this type of people who are emotional vampires and they require your energy is that uh, your eyelid starts to get heavy and uh, you get kind of sleepy. Uh, you may be starting to yawn and uh, being, being around these people, they um, make you tired. So very quickly, you begin to feel uh, exhausted. So that's one of the indications because, you know, they don't look different than other people. They look like everybody else. So sometimes, of course, you can tell by looking at them right away that there is something wrong. But, uh, but you know, it's very much possible you won't be able to identify that by looking at someone, but you definitely begin to feel when you're around them. Um, Another thing can happen is your mood can change. Uh, you can swing your mood and all of a sudden you can find yourself in an encounter with an emotional vampire that you become very much withdrawn and you become quiet and your mood swings. And uh, that's another indication that when you're around them, that will happen to you because they suck your energy out. Um, I mean, you know, some people, when they encounter uh, emotional vampires, they may just uh, go to comfort food and start binging on some food. Uh, everybody's uh, reaction is different. But personally, uh, I can only speak from my own direct experiences I get very tired and uh, I start yawning. Um, I feel kind of like slimed, like something ooh, weird has happened. And um, so what you need to do is really to come back into your center and uh, remember who you are and stay in this place of being still and, and kind of not really allow them to come into your field and suck your energy out. So you have to really stay, stay in your center. Now, there's different kinds of emotional vampires. There's um, different categories. Some, you can say the narcissist that uh, normally the narcissist, they just talk about me. It's all conversation is about them. Um, and they normally start talking to you and talking a lot and telling you their life story and this happened and that happened. And basically they want you to pay attention to them. And um, whatever they're talking about, it's about them. They're not interested to ask you a question, how you're doing, what is going on with your life? Where are you at? What are your accomplishments? A zero. And uh, they just want to talk about themselves. And they want your attention on them 100%. And kind of when you don't give them that attention or you pull your attention away, they normally have a tendency of withdrawing, becoming quiet, and and going in this place of being disinterested. And also they can just become very cold with you because you're not giving them what they want. They want, you're not paying much attention to them. And remember that it's all about them. So, and they have no awareness of, uh, in a way it's like they have lost a sense of empathy. They can't, um, sense and feel uh, or there's no aware, no consciousness of their in their rela relationship with someone else that whether you're interested in their story uh, whether you have any energy for what they're telling you or not they just want to suck that energy out of you and uh, so basically it so um, <clears throat> 
we can't really avoid the emotional vampires um, because some you may have some in your family uh, you may have some friends colleagues um, all kinds of different walks of life you will encounter them but so it's almost impossible to avoid them however you have to learn how to manage them it's management uh, because that's part of life and you will be encountering them whether you like it or you don't and of course we all want to avoid them and walk away do it if you can <laughs> so the <clears throat> Personally, if I do encounter uh, someone who's very narcissist and they're really an emotional vampire and they're sucking my energy, is I um, would, since everything is about them, you're going to have to be dealing with them uh, that they come first. So they may want me to do something for them or they want me to pay attention to their story or whatever it is. And uh, you have to clear my boundaries. And since I don't want to get sucked into this thing and have them suck my energy out and make me exhausted, is I would say, for example, look, I can't help you right now, but... I will be able to look into this and help you next week. Remember, you have to remember that everything's about them and nothing's about you. So you're gonna have to uh, address them as the centerpiece of the whole thing. So that's how you want to deal with them. And, uh, and then you, you, know, you just move on and do your thing. Uh, another thing is, in uh, energy vampires is the victim. The victim is that um, you just have to be careful because everything's about the, the um, externalize their experiences that Everybody's bad, everybody wants to cheat them, everybody wants to take them for a ride. Uh, the government sucks and is not doing its job. The city council is not doing their job. Uh, if they're working in an office, people wanna cheat them. Um, if they're in a relationship, um, I mean, if it's a woman, we'll say all men are pigs and they're, they're only one one thing if it's a man will say all women are slots or they're gold digger uh, because they want to take him for a ride so they're always projecting uh, their issues on other circumstances outside of themselves and they're a victim of all these other people's and circumstances and they're not willing to take responsibility or look within to see if anything's wrong with them. And again, the same thing. They want to tell you their life story. They want you to kind of feel sorry for them, feel pity for them. And um, that's their way of start taking your attention, your energy out of you. And uh, I'm sure you have encountered them in your life. So the way to deal with them is you have to set up in a very cool way. It depends how much you care about this person. If somebody you don't know and you don't care about, of course, you're going to walk away from them and you're never going to see them again. But if they're a part of your family or is a close friend or uh, some situation, you have to deal with them. Uh, every once in a while, whatever, you know, you're married someone and this is somebody's mother or dad or sister and you can't uh, get away from them, whatever is the situation. Um, you want to limit your interaction and you want to just draw strong boundaries. For example, um, 
when I do come across this, these types and uh, I want to help them, but number one, they don't listen uh, or whatever you say, they turn it around and they go back to their story. So the kind of things you want to do is like, for example, listen, I only have five minutes and then I have to go. So then you can keep things within five minutes and let them do their thing or coming back at them and telling them, listen, you've already said this to me 10 times. Uh, is there anything else we can talk about? We have already talked about that. And uh, is there anything else? Or when you're ready, let me know and I'll make some suggestions. Normally they're not interested in your suggestions because uh, they want your energy and they just want to go blah, 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 blah about all these stories uh, that has happened. And uh, that's all they want to do and how they become a victim as a result of the things happen in their childhood, their relationship. Dad died, mom was alcoholic, this happened, that happened, they were left out, blah, 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 whatever is the story. So anyway, uh, so that's the victim type. Then you have another type uh, of an energy vampire who's uh, more of a controller. They uh, suck your energy by wanting to control you. So for example, let's say, you are teaching or you, you're in front of a camera or you want to give a talk or uh, I just speak for myself. And immediately they want to tell you, okay, I, you shouldn't be standing like this, Zarathustra. You shouldn't be uh, talking like that. You should be start, start your conversation like that. And uh, you should keep your posture this way and make sure you don't wear what you're wearing and don't wear white and you should be wearing another color. So immediately they want to control you and tell you how to do things, uh, even though you may have been doing it for 10 years and they know better, more than you do. And actually that type, they know everything, everything. They know things about the ecosystem and the weather. They know things about what's going on in other planets and the uh, ecosystem of other planets. Um, they know about the future. They know about politics. They know about uh, other cultures. <laughs> they know about science. <laughs> so I don't know, have you encountered one of these people that they know everything about everything? <laughs> and it's and it's very draining and it's really exhausting because you get very tired being around them. So uh, you would one thing you don't want to do is if you're in cl close relationship with this kind is you don't want to tell them what to do because that's going to create a lot of rage out of them and they get really angry. So with this type, you have to be very careful how you maneuver and how you deal with them. So, but one thing you wanna avoid is not telling them what to do. So you wanna create a situation that, making some suggestions that they come up with an idea of what to do so they believe that it's their own idea but you kind of implanted the um, idea in their mind, but you just directed them in a way that they, it's their idea because you have to remember these are control freaks. So, uh, so anyway, that's another kind of energy vampire. Um, <clears throat> um, another kind of energy vampire is the ones who kind of have split personality. They, uh, 
lovey-dovey with you. You're their best friend. You're their teacher. You are the best thing has happened in the world. And uh, they're praising you. They're putting you up on a pedestal. And all of a sudden, they can, if you do something or say something, or not giving them enough attention, uh, you're not allowing them to suck your energy and drain you, they can flip and, and they can completely change personality and become rude and aggressive and kind of slash you energetically like they're hitting you, you know, back, slapping you in your face energetically wise and shift uh, to a very rude or ignorant kind of a person. And uh, I don't know if you have encountered any, or you have anyone like that in your family or around you or dealing with someone like that. But that's another kind of the energy vampire that as long as you're just doing everything they want you to do and you're positive and you're giving them what they want, uh, you're, they love you. But the moment that you're not really doing the things they, they want you to do, they flip and uh, their personality changes. Um, <clears throat> I'm open to anybody wants to share with me of their experiences or you have any questions, raise your hand or write on, on uh, the chat box and we can talk about it. Okay, yeah. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Wow. Yeah. What's what's? Tell me. Share with me of your experience. Uh, I came late now, so I missed the beginning, right? Right. So but, uh, I, I, but oh. I heard you talking about the energy vampires, and first you're talking about the victim, and then the one who wants to control, and then the one who is. Uh, shifting right yeah the first actually the first one you missed out is the narcissist type uh there's different kind of energy vampires there are different yeah. kind of people who suck your energy and they want yeah. your attention and what i mentioned in the beginning is one of the indications as you evolve spiritually and you become more open and you're vibrating from a higher frequency and you're emanating light is you attract these kind of people that they want your energy and they're basically wounded something has happened yeah. to them and they become wounded yeah. so uh what one of these types is a narcissist type which is all about me and they all want to talk about themselves they're not interested in anything you have to say is they're the center of the universe. So we have that kind, we have the victim, we have the controller, and the one with split personality. Yeah. So go ahead. Now, now I gave you a little uh, uh, yeah, update yeah. very quickly. Yeah. W what I think about is that uh, I feel that I have a lot of experience of all of them, and also, uh, I can see like all the four types kind of exist in everyone sometimes, right? And also, I can recognize it in myself. So it's not just only black uh, or white, because I can feel sometimes uh, things is just uh, about me, or sometimes I'm a victim, or sometimes I want to control and sometimes also I, I shift when things don't go my way, right? I don't feel that it, it's like, like uh, that I'm like that all the time. I don't feel like that. And also I can recognize that some people, they are often, like most of the time, they are a controller or most of the time they are a narcissist. And, and I recognize this a lot. And the, the thing that comes to my mind, it is like, if you have a boss, you can walk away, right? 
or uh, if you have a, a relationship, maybe it's difficult to walk away, but you can walk away. But uh, for example, um, like my son, I love him so much, but uh, sometimes I feel that, you know, my energy really, really, really gets drained. And it's not uh, his meaning to take my energy. It is like you say that he's wounded, right? Okay. Uh, but it takes a lot of of my energies, my experience. Right. Okay. And and he is there in my life uh, all the time, so I cannot just say <laughs> I I cannot just walk away, and I cannot just yeah. You understand what I mean? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm still waiting for do you. you. Do, you have, do you have any advice to me? Because I love him so much, uh, right? And uh, I want to help him. And uh, mm, yeah. Right. Do you have any advice for me? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, when you're, you have a situation, okay, so when does he become... Uh, when does he suck your energy? When does he drain your energy? It's not obviously all the time. So no, absolutely, absolutely not all the time. Yeah, but exactly. But there are times that he goes into that place and starts taking your energy away. Yeah. So can you identify the times that he goes into that space? For example, if he doesn't get uh, what he wants. Okay. Uh, when uh, when he feels that he has to do things that he don't want to do. Uh, for example, uh, if he don't get the attention he wants to get, right? Right. And for example, if I am very tired uh, too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. So, and then, you know, when in a daily basis, uh, what percentage of the time he's like that? If, you know, from 100%, is he like 20% of the time you're together, he does that or more or less? I'm just... You know, you know, the thing is that, um, you know, I let him be a lot because because I don't have the power, right? But um, I think it's a lot. So yeah. would you say fifty percent of the time he kind of sucks your energy? Yeah, yeah, maybe, but it 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 kind of depends, right? Right, right. Okay, and how old is yeah. he? 12 years old. Okay, so he's around the age that you can communicate with him. So... Be, yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but yes, and now the last time uh, I feel that I can communicate a lot more with him, right? Okay. And I, and I feel that there's a, um, a stronger uh, uh, connection when it's come to communication. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. I feel that he that he listened more and he take in what I say, right? right. And also uh, before I was feeling uh, I I was feeling so uh bad that I couldn't reach him and now I'm kind of um I'm a lot more centered now. Okay. So so I don't get... Um, you don't get drained. No, not in the same way. Right, right. Yeah, so, I don't get affected the same way. Right, exactly. I don't take things so personal like I did before. I still take it personal, right? But not like before. Right, so before. Something, something shifted in you you have become more centered and as a result of that you can see the reflection in him too so 
uh, you're working on yourself. You're becoming more calm. You're less emotionally involved and attached to the results of events happening around you. And that's in some way is affecting him in his uh, responding to you. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, so, okay. So we're in agreement on that part of it. So now let's talk about uh, the first part of what you mentioned. So from my uh, point of view, uh, this is a situation that you have time to work with somebody as you're working on yourself. Uh, this is not somebody you see once a week um, here and there, and uh, that's it. You have an interaction with them. Uh, it's somebody you live with on a regular basis. So uh, there, is, there is an opportunity to turn things around and to evolve together and discover things together. So it is a go in a way, it's a golden opportunity. And it's a great challenge in this life uh, because in a way he's your teacher and is pushing you to look at things <laughs> within yourself, you know, things you don't want to look at. He forces you to deal with it and, uh, and vice versa, you know, it's, it's both ways. It's just not one way. <laughs> okay. So, right. And, so in a way, okay, in this situation, when you have time, you got opportunity and you're kind of forced into under the same roof with someone is, number one, I always take responsibility for myself. I always look at myself first and I just look at it that, okay, uh, what is it I need to learn from this situation? Why is existence put me in this situation? What is it I don't want to look at? What is this person mirroring back to me that I'm avoiding to see? I'm not willing to look at before I put my finger on them. Now, I understand what you said. I'm going to get into that, okay? I'm not trying to avoid answering your, your concern. But I'll get to that. But what I, I want to go systematically is number one is I always need to look at myself. What am I avoiding? What am I not looking at that I put myself in this situation? It gets repeated over and over again. So what do I need to look at? What's missing? Was there a needy part of me? Is there a part of me that wants to suck energy? Uh, that I'm in this situation manifested this in my home. So I first look at myself. Now, in relationship of dealing with him is that <clears throat> a lot of times when we're in a tight situation, like you're a single mom and you have your son and you're the policeman, you're the bad, bad guy, you know, because you're the mom and you're enforcing discipline. So naturally, there is going to be some kind of battle between a 12-year-old who's slowly coming to puberty and his body's changing, his hormones are pumping, and very soon he's gonna come to this place of being revolting and wanting to claim his own autonomy. And especially on one hand, you know, you're the mommy, you have the nest and he loves you, he's very connected with you. And then on the other hand, he wants to break away and prove that um, he, can, he can stand on his feet and whatever you say is wrong. So you got to understand that this, this uh, power control uh, is going to be happening. This struggle of who's the boss and who has to follow the other person because you're the mom, you're the authority, you're the bread bringer and, and he's the child. So 
there's going to be some kind of power struggle here. So the key is from this higher perspective of awareness, consciousness, is to recognize that. And it's for you to recognize it, that, uh oh, we're coming to this place, or we are already in this place. All right, so how am I going to deal with this? Is one of the best ways is to create a situation for, for him to see what he's doing. Creating a situation that he recognizes he's sucking your energy. He is draining you. Uh, and for example, I'll just give you an example. Um, I grew up with parents that they were excessively in a in an excessive way, not even a little bit, excessively worried, always worried about things, <clears throat> always. Oh, we're worried about you, you know, going to a party. We're worried about you going to school. We're worried about you going on the street and play with other kids. Uh, and this thing is just keep going all the way to my adulthood. Oh, I'm worried about you going, uh, driving to San Diego. I'm worried about you going to Sweden. Uh, uh, make sure you give me a call when you get, you get there. Da, 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 da. So <clears throat> I grew up with this. And sometimes when it gets too much and uh, it starts to drain me, and it's annoying, then what I do is I reverse things. So uh, if I get to a point that I feel like I'm, I can't breathe anymore, you know, and it's, it's gotten too much. And of course, before I had parents, I had two of them, now I only have my mom. So I turn things around. So what I will do is all of a sudden, I call my mom five times a day. Hi, mom. How are you? What are you doing? Uh, what did you eat? Uh, are you okay? Where are you going? Oh, I'm fine. Da, 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 da. I hang up. One hour after, I call her again. Are you going to go out to do some shopping? Can you just be aware? Be careful. Don't take the bus because da, 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 da. And I'm worried about you. And then I hang up, you know, I talk about it. Then two hours after, I call her and do the same thing. I call her five times to the point like he said, she's like, what are you doing? I mean, why are you calling me so many times? I said, well, aren't you, you do the same thing to me. You call me five times a day. I turn it around. So to mirror this back to them and to show them how annoying it is and because I can't tell her if she calls me like three times, four times in a day because she's worried about something. And I, I'm just being a little bit excessive. I'm exaggerating things. And I tell her, mom, don't worry about me. I'm a grown man. I managed to make it to this point and I'm okay. She won't hear what I say. She's not listening or she's not capable to understand what I say. So it doesn't matter how many times I tell her I'm okay, or I get angry, and you know eventually you're gonna get angry because it's annoying. So, so I, I understand, I experience that a lot of times when you're responding and you're trying to make, make sense verbally with someone, they don't understand what you say. So you have to sometimes demonstrate the same thing they're doing to you for them to see it by becoming annoying, by becoming demanding their energy, demanding their attention, you know? Maybe you can't tell him what he's doing to you, but you can show him what he's doing to you. And bring him to that place because you have time to work with each other and go deeper. And uh, so you want to mirror that to him and see what happens. 
to the point that he starts complaining. Like, what's going on? Why are you doing this? Why are you asking that? And I said, well, because you do the same thing to me. I'm just showing you what you do to me. You suck my energy. You're demanding my attention. You're da 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 da. You're complaining or you're throwing a tantrum when you're not getting what you want. Okay. I just want to show you what you do. So, so that way you mirror that and hopefully eventually they start to understand or there's an opening for conversation that you can talk with each other and, and uh, explain things to each other. Um, or at least create some codes. Uh, I did that one time with a friend of mine that uh, we created a code. So, and the code was whenever I say this thing, whenever I bring this code, that means you are doing a, you're, you're picked up some kind of a kooky behavior. You're doing something crazy or you're insulting me unconsciously. You're doing, you're putting me down. You're making me feel bad. And I use this code instead of pointing out to the whole story. I use the code. When I use the code, that means you've gone into that place. So we make an agreement on it. So then I bring the code and then they, oh, okay. I am, I am in this place of blaming you, or I'm in this place of sucking your energy, or I'm in this place of being a victim. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me by bringing the code. And then you just go back. So that's my suggestion. So you may want to try that and see what happens. And let me know. Okay, Riley? Is that? Yeah. Does yeah. It make sense? Is that cool? Yeah, cool. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it up. That was a wonderful thing. I appreciate it. Okay. So we have five minutes. Um, Anybody has anything to, to share or say, uh, you're welcome to. What a good bunch. Everyone's quiet. <laughs> so anyway, um, I uh, just wanted to share with you that, uh, by the way, we have um, uh, some of uh, most of you are familiar with uh, Ore Sweden retreat. We I do this retreat once a year. It's in Ore Sweden. Uh, it's in the mountains, and uh, we do it in the beginning of July. This year we're going to start on June 29th, and we go till uh, July 8. So it's going to be 10 days. Uh, it's the fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness training program. And uh, this is our fifth annual um, of the training program. So I'm very excited. It's, uh, it's number five. And uh, we've had four very successful years. And this is the signature retreat that I do offer it's a lot of fun. Uh, we dance a lot. We spend 10 days together. Um, it's very transformative. I teach all five levels of the healing training program, including level three that I talk about diet and uh, cleansing and how to boost our immune system, as well as all the shamanic work and psychic surgery and uh, everything else we learn, uh, including uh, the last level, which is uh, awareness. So we put it up on my website, zaratustra.tv. Um, I have limited room, as you know. We only have six single rooms, and um, the rest is double. And uh, so if you're interested, uh, go ahead, jump in. We also created a payment plan for those of you who need to put a deposit and come up with the rest later on or or uh, anyway 
uh, everything's on my website. Go ahead and check it out and go through the program. And uh, feel free to reach out to, to us at the home office in California, or uh, you can contact Anneli, uh, or you can talk to Hilde uh, Evanstadt. She knows a lot about it. If you can't get a hold of Anneli, but Anneli's name, phone number is on our website and uh, reach out and ask me questions. Uh, but ORE is up, so we're available for enrollment. Um, Sedona Retreat is on. We're going to get together on uh, January 4th to January 12th. Uh, we're going to start the year 2020 and uh, laser vision 2020. So we're going to go with the Big Bang entering into year 2020. Uh, and those of you who are in Los Angeles, I'm uh, going to be presenting at Conscious Life Expo at LAX in Los Angeles from February 7th to 10th. And uh, uh, we'll have a workshop two weeks after in LA. And then in mid uh uh, March, I will be coming back to Europe. So I'm going to be in Europe actually this year for two months in spring because uh, it's going to run into Easter holiday and I'm going to five different countries. So feel free to go on my website and check out my schedule and uh, reach out, write to me an email or on Facebook. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer your question. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. The Academy is going to be at the same time. Next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Times and as well as uh, 7 p.m. in European time. Namaste. Blessings to you. And look forward to connecting with you soon.